Yep, I'm gonna do it. Hey guys, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite albums. And today I'm gonna be doing an album review on Metallica's Ride the Lightning. Woo! Oh yeah. Um, I, um, uh, I don't think I, like, other than... I think Ghost Smelliora, I've never made a full-length review on a on a metal album before. And, uh, oh yeah, I also did um, Portal Ion. But, uh, you know what? I never did a classic metal album review. A classic. So, um, you know, technically this is the first classic metal album that I'm going to be covering on my channel. It's Metallica. Um, one of the best metal bands out there, one of the most famous, most popular, most mainstream, one of the pioneers of thrash metal. They are formed in the USA with James Hetfield, Cliff Burton, rest in peace, Kirk Hammett, and drummer Lars Ulrich from Denmark. And a while after releasing Master of Puppets, I think, is when Cliff Burton unfortunately and tragically passed away and uh, they replaced him with someone else. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's focus on this album. The, uh, I guess you could say the, uh, the, the peak, the peak of Metallica happened from their second album to their fourth. I think it's their peak. And Ride the Lightning is their sophomore album, released in 1984. And, um, you know, first of all, I think uh, what makes this album a classic is that um, it's... The, the metal tracks on the album, the tracks on the album in general, they are some of the most iconic tracks. They are... Uh, catchy but also very rough, raw, aggressive, and very electrifying, and you know, this kind of music is actually kinda rare in the 80s. And before releasing this album, they released their debut studio album, Kill 'Em All, and while I think Kill 'Em All is a good album, I don't think it's all that great, but it's Ride the Lightning, the second album, that really tops it off amazingly because a it's more versatile b the track list is way more watertight so uh yeah i think this album is more versatile than its predecessor i think the sounds on this album is also way more mature and i also think the production is way better even though it still has this rough raw vibe to it which actually helps the metal sound even more aggressive and uh yeah the track list really watertight pretty much all the tracks here are pretty great um uh yeah except for one track which i think it's not that great but i still think it's pretty good i guess before jumping into the album i want to talk about my own history with metal music when i was young i think about you know six years old seven years old i know about the whole metal genre but i told myself I would never get into this kind of music because it's bad, it's violent, it's angry, it's, it's usually, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's usually very, uh, violent and, and monstrous and, you know, it's, you know, a lot of metal bands are satanic, you know, like back then that's how I thought. And you know what, right now I... I changed my mind completely. Afterwards, uh, when I was um, around um, 11, 12, I started listening to artists like Eminem, uh, which isn't rock music at all. It's hip hop. But like, you know, you, you start from there. You start music from there, from Eminem. I also listened to a lot of Coldplay. And then that's when I started getting into rock music. And then the further I listened to, rock music the harsher it gets and then two three years ago i started to get into metal music and now um i have to admit metallica is not the 
the the most aggressive metal band out there it's not the most extreme metal band out there it's very much not but uh, it still doesn't mean that metallica is a hell of a good band and the albums they put out in the 80s are straight classics and uh, you know if you want to get to metal music you want to get into metal music metallica is definitely a great way to start off yeah so ride the lightning what's so good about it i think um you know, it's a really solid, cohesive, pure thrash metal album. You know, as usual, we get these very chuggy, crunchy guitars, except they are really heavy and aggressive, often with very angry guitar riffs that are also kind of creative, surprisingly. And of course, we also get these very, very uh, fast and uh, violent, maniacal drums, which sound kind of aimless at times but it sort of makes the song even more fiery and uh, of course james hetfield's vocals are pretty amazing the devilish growls on this thing is really uh, raw and rough and wild but yet it has its human side as well which is also one of the reasons why this album feels three-dimensional and um yeah other than that i think I think the album overall feels very electrifying, very raw, very thrilling, even though not necessarily dark or somber. I still think it's it's a really fun album and also a really muscular album as well. Anyway, uh, the album starts off with Fight Fire with Fire, which surprisingly starts off with some clean, innocent, sparkling acoustic guitars. And then the very strong, harsh bass hops in. And then after a while, James Hetfield hops in. And he sounds like a beast being unleashed. Because the vocals, they don't align with the guitar riffs all that well on the track. And it sort of makes the track even more monstrous. And, uh, you know, it's it's pretty pretty crazy. And the chorus, it just feels really wild. Fight fire with fire! And um, the song overall talks about violence a lot and how we deal with violence with violence. So it sort of makes the situation even worse. And the lyrics, they're actually surprisingly pretty good. And towards the end of the track, we get these hyper speed drums that's just constantly tapping in the back. And um, it's, uh, it's really thrilling, to be honest. And, you know, even though the drumming here isn't the most complex drumming ever, um, I still think it it makes the track more aggressive in a lot of ways. You know, uh, Lars Ulrich's drumming is, you know, kind of controversial, also kind of a joke. A lot of people joke about his drumming. Uh, yeah, I also like those jokes, but uh, to be honest, the drumming isn't all that bad. And then for the second track, we have the title track. And once again, we get these very loud, thunderous guitar riffs and these very wild lyrics. Flash before my eyes. Now it's time to die. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a metal vocalist. So, you know, it's normal that I don't sing metal songs well, okay? It's completely normal. Oh my gosh, I butchered it. Uh, yeah. The bass solo of the thing, the bass solos on the thing is really friggin' amazing. Really friggin' awesome. Cliff Burton is a hell of a talented bassist, I have to say. And then the third track is For Whom the Bell Tolls. For Whom the Bell Tolls. Oh man, I love the track. I love the track. At first we get these bells like these church bells and they are sort of like a a warning for the things to come and uh man and then up next we get these very terrorizing descending guitar lines and then we get these very creepy crawly guitar chugs which which is, you know, which are pretty creative because it's the 80s and back then people aren't really that experienced with, you know, creative bass lines and all, especially in metal music. 
and oh man, the guitars here are just so good. Quality guitars. Gung 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 gung. And then we get these super um flashy, electrifying, uh, tumbly guitars that goes up and down. And overall, it's a really, really catchy song. The lyrics are also really damn good. And I just love how the song builds momentum and then releases it and then builds it again. It's just so well arranged, so well composed, so well put together. And then we have the fourth track, Fate of Black. Oh boy. Oh boy. I love this track. Ah. Yeah, this track is um is uh, one of the softer me metallic ka tracks. And uh yeah, but surprisingly this is one of the more hard-hitting and impactful Metallica tracks as well. The first half of Fate of Black is an amazing ballad that's actually kind of soulful and sad with these sad watery guitars and all. It's pretty nice actually. And uh, the lyrics on this track is actually some good ass lyrics like 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 actually pretty good you should definitely check out you know it mainly deals with losing touch losing hope you know life itself losing meaning and it's actually pretty depressing pretty sad even though the song is not like the saddest song of all time uh but still the lyrics, they are pretty hard-hitting, pretty impactful, and at the second half of the track, we get these very hard-hitting and hard-hitting and rumbly guitar riffs, and it just wraps up the track really well with a climax, and I just love this track. I love this track, and for some reason, it's still pretty catchy, and um, you know, it's one of my favorite Metallica tracks. And then we have Trapped Under Ice, which is uh, one of the more quick and urgent Metallica tracks. I really like the crazy guitar doodles in the beginning. I don't know if it's Kirk Hammett or was it Cliff Burton, but whoever did it, genius. And uh, I also kind of like the chorus. It reminds me of Queen for some reason. It reminds me of Queen a lot, you know, just the, just, you know, because of the vocals of how uh, wild and and youthful the vocals are and i think overall the track is a really fun solid metal track and then we have the track escape which um is um probably the most mild track on the entire track list not that it's bad i think it's pretty good actually uh, but, you know, it just pales a little bit in comparison with all the other tracks on the album. But anyway, I still like it. I still like it a bit. I like the guitar riffs, even though they're kind of slow. And I think the chorus is actually pretty nice. It's pretty anthemic, even though it's not all that exciting, all that thrilling, all that energetic. It's, um, it's pretty, I guess it's, it's more accessible, it's way easier to vibe with the chorus of this track if you're not all that into metal. Uh, but still, you know, it's just not one of the more um, uh, powerful or electrifying tracks from Metallica. Uh, and then we have A Creeping Death, which is a great way to pick the pace back up. We get some really epic, dramatic guitar lines on this thing. And the lyrics here, they, they are kind of religious in fact you know just right off the bat on the first verse it talks about hebrew slaves serving the pharaoh living in fear and how they must rebel and uh, the whole song feels really epic um yeah it's it's pretty awesome also pretty catchy as well and then the album ends off with the call of cthulhu cthulhu yeah cthulhu uh, you know, on the track, it's on the track title, it's spelled K-T-U-L-U, -U, but uh, it's actually spelled C-T-H-U-L-U, -U, and it's, um, it's a creature from, uh, from a series of H.P. Lovecraft novels, right? And it's a, it's a really devilish creature, it's like a kraken, it's like a behemoth, it's, um, it's destructive, devilish, 
monstrous evil you know the deal and this track itself is a nine minute long instrumental finish for the album and even though it doesn't sound like anything that great at first it just grows on you and it slowly becomes a fantastic a spectacular metallica track we get these guitar crisps and these guitar lines that are just really cold-blooded and crunchy they sound like a clock because because it's just constantly ticking and flickering and then the guitar riffs they slowly build and it becomes more and more complex more and more dark and adventurous and spooky and the track gains weight throughout time and it becomes very destructive towards the end and then at the very 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 end of the track it sort of stops and then all of a sudden we get these very loud and bombastic drums banging and all these guitars screaming and shouting for the one last time and it's um it's some theatrical shit right there it's pretty awesome and um yeah i think it's a pretty great and solid finish to the album not gonna lie so uh yeah i i think overall the album is very watertight very solid almost all the tracks here are are awesome and great and um i think uh, tracks like for whom the bell tolls fate to black and uh the, the the last track i think they are just legendary they are legendary yeah, what else can I say? The guitar playing here is really skillful. The drums, they are thrilling. The vocals, they are um, very aggressive and raw. And overall, the, the album just sounds absolutely electrifying. It has its uh, sadder moments, edgier moments, but also its brighter and more violent moments. And um, my favorite track here is Fate to Black, and my least favorite is Escape. I am giving Metallica's Ride the Lightning a strong, strong, strong 9 out of 10. So, have you listened to Metallica's Ride the Lightning? From 1 to 10, how much did you rate it? Like if you like it, and subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching. I gotta go Weezer review tomorrow.